Good morning, this is Andy with Mountain Computers. It's March 19th, 2019. And uh, we've been off for four or five days just working on computers, Macintoshes, Linux machines, servers, you name it. And uh, today's another great day and I want to share with you um, a subject we talked about earlier and it had to do with um, uh, leadership organizational management. Um, so what we're going to talk about is when I was doing my master's degree and my PhD, I didn't finish my PhD, I just started it. And uh, after three classes, one of the arguments we had in our group of, of residents, we were going through the residency, um, was uh, what are the traits of an organizational leader? Well, at the time, this is in 2005, we were talking about five different major traits. And I wish I could find my papers, I wish I could find my notes. However, um, I've interacted in organizations, corporate, government, nonprofit, all levels, all layers, all the way through division to division, and especially at Microsoft um, and around Reno, uh, Arizona, Scottsdale, um, Oregon, uh, Virginia, uh, Kansas, you name it, doesn't matter, any rank, generals to CEOs, all the way down to the janitor. Um, it takes people to run an organization, and an organizational leader has to have some traits and some qualities about them. Um, not necessarily politicians, because politicians, um, that's like a two-sided coin, you know. <laughs> not a plug nickel, um, but that's funny. And not an Indian nickel. Those are cool. I used to have a couple of those. That's with the uh, Indian on the bison. Those are really cool. I had a couple of them when I was a kid. But anyhow, uh, the leadership qualities and what does it take. Um, I'm reading from my blog that I posted on March 16th. And the top five that I could come up with based on my researching my notes that I could find was number one is discipline and sheer dedication. Two, good communication skills. Three, decision making. Four, valuing his or her team. And five, integrity. Um, those are okay top five. My rule is top three. Um, if I was to say the top three of those, one of them of being an organizational leader, what does it take lead to be a leader, is um, number one, decision making, understanding how to make decisions. Number two, communication skills. And number three, whew, it's a tough one, valuing team versus integrity. Um, integrity should be implied but it's not necessarily. I, I know some CEOs who have lied to me, um, to my face, um, and I've caught them at that, and I don't care. I, I kick them to the curb as quickly as I can. Um, yes, you can fire your boss. <laughs> um, just don't pay him any mind or any attention anymore. Find a different place, go to a different division, change companies. Um, we're only on this planet so long, so either you're gonna work for a great leader, as well as yourself, because I work for myself, but I also work for my clients. So somebody says, well, it must be great running your own company. Well, my leadership traits are, my customers are who I report to. My clients I report to. Everywhere you go, every company you work with, you will have the need to help people. You want to help people, I love helping people, but you have to have some intrinsic qualities about yourself to be a leader, but also being a leader means being a great follower. I mean, I'm a great follower if the leader I'm following is great. And yes, I can say you're bad. Um, I had bad managers at Microsoft that just screwed up my life. And that's where you get out of the, get out of the way, get away from them. Um, so <laughs> I'm meandering a little bit, but that's okay. It's, I need to polish up my, my focus here. So number one, discipline and sheer dedication. Um, gotta love what you do. As a leader, whatever whatever product or service you have, um, and in my case, it's computers. I love computers. Computers are cool. They're a great tool. I like them when they run fast, clean, efficient. They don't argue with you. Um, that's the way it should be. Inexpensive. Shouldn't be expensive. I mean, you, you pay for what you get. Um, but the sheer dedication and discipline of a leader. When I started this company, I got up at six and went to sleep at midnight. Repeat that for five years, six days a week. And then after five years, you get your first vacation. Um, not everybody's dedicated to do that. 
Um, this isn't my first business, it's my third business. Um, I've been in major corporations and uh, I've decided that where you go into a corporation just determines how far you go up. So if you come in at staff level and you jump to management, um, it'll take you a while to work up the chain. It's seniority, it's politics, it's drama, it's opportunity. Um, but in leadership, um, if you find a great leader, and sometimes they'll find you because they'll see your work and say, I want you to work for me. And either it's because of their ethics and integrity or values, or it's their, mm, I know some VPs that are just um, scoundrels, <laughs> just absolute scoundrels. And I see people reporting to them that are frustrated, and I, I can appreciate their pain. But I say, well, then just move on. Move on. But I love the money. Well, there's money elsewhere, so think about that. Good communication skills. Uh, am I a great communicator? I didn't used to be. Um, am I fair now? I can talk on my toes. I can speak and listen at the same time. Great leaders need to have great eye contact, have great listening skills, great processing skills, have great timing, um, hate, have great writing skills. Now, I've known some VPs that have terrible spelling, and they just have to get people around them to clean up their email before it goes out. That's normal. Um, but great communication. Being an orator. You know, we got some presidents who are good and bad. Um, some greater than others. Obama. Great orator. He was impressive. I, I wouldn't say I was impressed with him. I mean, he had a job to do. I mean, Clinton. Um, look at Reagan. Reagan was cool. I mean, I grew up, I was born in the 60s, so Jimmy Carter. Um, I was after Nixon. I mean, I was too young to understand Nixon. Um, but other great leaders. Um, even Trump. Trump's okay. I liked Trump's tweets. His tweets are good. Communication. I don't have to go get it through the media. I don't need the media to interpret for me or editorialize. What was he really saying? I don't need that. I need to hear it from them and then let me process. Let me see what's going on. And like my wife always said, I don't care what you say, it's what you do. Now, what you say is important because words can hurt. However, actions speak louder sometimes. And it's a little about so communication. Decision making. Okay. <laughs> this is a good one. So one, discipline, sheer dedication. Uh, not just hard working, but smart working. My dad always said work smart, not hard. Well, you got to figure that out sooner than later. Um, two communication skills. Um, videotape yourself and talk on a subject and then critique yourself. We did that in college and I had so many ums in my first video recording. It was terrible. Um, like that one. <laughs> Decision making. I have said no more than anybody that I know of, but it's because I don't have enough information to say yes. Now, I do make yes decisions. I don't wait for critical mass. I speak about that all the time. We wait until everybody's complaining before we, we do something. That's not the truth. I mean, I just had some things done around the store and the house, and uh, it's timing. You know, there's, you know, use your instincts. There's no rush. Sometimes there's a rush. Um, let me go back to communication skills for a second because when I talk about a rush, I'm thinking about there's only two times um, only two times people can yell at me. This is my behavior. If somebody's about ready to die or the house is on fire, you know, those two times. But if you yell at me for any reason, I don't care if you're Italian or what have you, I don't care what nationality, nobody deserves to be yelled at for whatever reason, okay? Ever. As a leader, you don't do that. Um, you can be a little firm. You can, you know, silence is, a, is deadly. Um, but anyhow, that was communication. Only two reasons to scream and yell, and those are my rules. Where did I get those from? I think my dad, but that's, that's a good place. Uh, decision making. Um, don't write a book. Be clear. Read what you write out loud. See how it sounds. Um, I'd say for decision making, you can. You don't want to have this paralysis analysis thing. Analysis paralysis thing. Get enough information, make a decision, and if you get more information tomorrow based on yesterday's decision, you can change that decision. Nothing says you have to stick with what you said yesterday. I don't care. 
You know, if you sign a contract, you know, there's rules about contracts. You have 72 hours to rescind it, change it, appeal it. Um, there are some things where once you've made that decision, it's a done deal. Uh, <laughs> organ transplants, that's a done deal. Um, if you give away an organ, uh, you're probably not going to get it back. Um, that's a done deal. Um, but that's an important one, being a donor. Um, valuing, number four, valuing his or own, his her team. It take team. Teams are important. Being trusted as a leader in a team. Um, a democracy, an organization, isn't a democracy. Okay? Um, there are decision makers and there's leaders. Our country is built on democracy. We vote 51-49. You know, that's how um, wills are said, 51-49. Executors, ownership um, of a company, 51-49. Um, the majority, two-thirds majority, 100% um, majority. Um, when it comes to teams, those teams need to understand that input is input. doesn't mean because you give me input, I've got to act on it. As a leader, I take input and I note it. Now, if I acknowledge it and say, yeah, that's a great idea, let's, we should do that, but then it doesn't happen right away, don't get upset. Leaders have the, they have a lot of things going on in their head and they, they can be very transparent or they can be, you know, keep their cards to themselves. So, I don't know. I value my team. I have had executives above me hate me for valuing my team. They want me to treat them like cattle. Um, I think that's wrong. I, I, I've known some chief operating officers and some VPs and stuff like that that just treat people like, like they're slaves. And that's terrible. And uh, then expect me to get things done when they, and I know how they really feel. No, those are bad leaders. Get rid of those people. Now, they're greedy, unethical, and that's normal. That We have a, a percentage of those people out there, but you don't have to hang around them. Those are people who are acidic. Karma's really bad for them. It'll catch up to them. Just be honest as best as you can. Um, tell your team members, hey, you're doing great, and be sincere. Don't lie. Don't make things up. One thing that's important is if you don't have anything to say, don't fill it in with stupid. Just be quiet, you know. Number five, integrity. Um, ethics, integrity, that seems to be the last thing anybody gets taught in college or realtor school. I mean, I've seen realtors just flat out lie to me. And I've heard realtors that didn't know I was there and listening in a building, I heard them talk about me both ways. And I'm like, wow. And then I go around the corner and they look at me and go, oh, you're here. Yeah, that's ethics 101 violation. If you're a realtor and you represent the buyer and the seller, I'm the seller. The buyer comes in, I'm actually in the building, they don't know that, and I can hear them talking about me as the seller and all this stuff. That's happened, and I was like, I was not happy with that person. And I told the broker, I said, that person is done. Do you want me to tell you why? And if you've heard it once, you've heard it twice, you've heard it three times, so. Ethics, bend the rules, don't break them. If you're gonna bend them, and somebody else trained him, help have you bend them. <sighs> Hold your breath, exhale. Tell them, please don't do that. I, I can't lie for you. I cannot lie for another person. Um, I've had people want me to lie for them, and I, I just can't. just can't. I just tell them, you know, you need to do it a different way. I don't want to be involved. I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to respond to your texts. I'm not going to respond to your emails. I mean, I just can't. Um, instincts, just instincts. Have I lied in the past? Absolutely. About big things? No. Um, but oh, even white lies, that's bad. Um, everybody lies, everybody sins, we know that, okay? But that's okay. Um, that's life, that's being human. Uh, what's the number one reason, reason why people lie? Fear of rejection. That's the number one reason. And I can't tell you how many psychologists and how many psych classes are going to tell you, oh, there's all these other reasons why people lie. No. Every time I've lied, it was the fear of rejection somebody finds out the truth, they're going to reject you. you they could reject you. Um, that's a good lesson for your kids. I have set people up in a trap um, to see if they would lie and then told them afterwards. I said, it's okay. <laughs> I wanted to see if you were going to take the high road versus the low road. And in most cases, they pick somewhere in between, you know. You can see them wander around. It's like when you get trapped in a corner, it's fight or flight, and Ethics 101 says, do you take the high road 
or do you take the low road? Um, I know a lot of leaders that 80% of them probably take the high road and that 20% take the low road thinking they won't get caught. Well, unfortunately, we're getting too old for this. We can't violate our integrity and ethics. There's a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. I do tax avoidance. That's a 101 rule. That's finance 101. That's accounting 101. Um, but yeah, you can come in and look at my books. I've had audits. I've had audits in the military. I've had audits in my corporation. People look at you and go, wow, you just let them look at it? If they want to find, if they find something, let me know. I mean, there's really nothing in there. Um, yeah, just all you got to do is just just let let them have it. You know, they're gonna find it anyhow. If they're digging and they've got something, let them find it. All you can say is, really, and then you deal with it. You didn't know, or um, I've seen uh, business owners uh, get subjected to embezzlement. And it's a bad thing. I'm the only one that signs checks in my company. I don't care what size the company is. I, you cannot let other people sign away your corporation money. Now, if you get to a size where you have a million employees, that might get a little crazy. However, I think it's important to always keep the checkbook in your hands. And, and never trust another person. I don't trust another person. I've had people implicitly trust me. Not only one person. And it's not my spouse's. It's my... One of my best friends, um, Ed. Um, do I trust him? Yeah. Through and through. I mean, he hasn't helped me out like I want him to help me out, but he's got his own thing. He's told me why he can't help me out, and it's not because of him um, on things. But do we believe in each other? Yes, I believe in him. I believe in his journey. I believe in his, his, his fight and his challenges and stuff like that. He also believes in me very much so. Um, is he in my circle of trust? Yeah. <laughs> Am I in his circle of trust? Eh, probably on the edge. I used to be in it, but not so much anymore, probably. If he needs somebody to pull him out of the ditch, I can help him. The way, only ways I know how. Um, have I been in the ditch before and asked for his help? He said he always could rely on me. I could rely on him. Well, that's not true, but it's okay. You know, it's not about friendship. It's about responsibility and stuff like that, so... So what else? Let me go back here, just to sign out. Okay, discipline and dedication, good communication skills, decision making, valuing his team, and integrity. Um, there's some other ones here. What do I talk about? I already talked about direct input. Um, group think sucks. No, leaders understand group think. It's a bad thing. Um, there's parties of, of schools of thought that says uh, you do brainstorming, that's one. No filtering, no judgment, just brainstorming. This is the problem, these are the problems. Prioritize them, sort them. Get a, a lukewarm feeling where things are at. Um, build your team, you know, help your team. Sponsor people to work on projects that will make them better, you better. And it goes right into your direct reports, goes directly into your uh, monthly reports, annual reports, mission statement, values, everything. Uh, do I believe people going to school right now um, are getting in trouble? Yeah, the college system is really broken. It's good to go to college. It's good to get further education, fill in those gaps. Um, but it shouldn't be a life, um, you know, do it for life. I mean, I'm a lifelong student and learner. But I'm not going to get caught into these student loans. I did once. I did my master's. I could have had the VA pay for it, but no. So we're going to stop there. Share, like, and subscribe. I'll look at this video. I know I've wandered all over the place, and I'm going to do a part two. This will be in the um, to-be-edited version. So let me stop there and redo this real quick. So this is Andy from Mountain Computers. I'll be right back.